before it goes live. Um, that may be the only gut check that an application receives. Uh, let's say that they haven't engaged ACE services and they haven't gone through an application review. Uh -huh. They still have to go live and the networking team works very close <laughs> and the networking team works very closely with us uh, so that if they have a project that's about to go live and, and we haven't had a chance to sign off on it, they'll alert us to that. So we do have that sort of hook, that opportunity to make sure that nothing goes live without an opportunity to see it. Okay. Um, if they haven't had a, an application level review, we can direct them back to ACE for that application level review and we can say, hold on, hold the barn, you can't go live before uh, handling this. Now, let's say a project has already gone live and they've been through a design review, they've been through a consultation review, and we've set particular requirements on there. In our hypothetical, that would be implementing a server-side certificate for a web server uh, and implementing authentication. A compliance review, the third service, is um, our opportunity to go back and double check that they've actually followed our advice. It does that happen even if we haven't had a design review with you guys? If there's, it has happened that way. We have seen compliance reviews when there hasn't been a design review. It's rare. It makes it difficult for us and what we do is on the fly reassess what should have been done during a design review okay. and determine compliance based on what they should have done. In most cases though we're guiding them against the design review and the specific requirements in there. So you can see the interrelationship between the design consultation where we help steer them, a design review where we provide specific requirements, and a compliance review where we review what they've done, go back, double check, and make sure that they're following the requirements or understand the requirements. So it sounds like this is not like a like a requirement to have this type of reviews um, on the infrastructure side. So how do you get involved? How, I mean, who's your audience? Do you get, you know, like, oh, I decide that you guys are going to do a review on my application or in, on a particular case. Okay. How does that happen? Sure, sure. What's our audience and, and how do we engage? We have three primary audiences. Okay. Two of them are internal, one is external. So our primary internal audience is MSIT. And ACE services uh, is, is well known within MSIT and those engagement points are, are fairly well delineated. We have an internal portal where people can go to sign up for a review and we can direct them as appropriate. Someone may ask for a design review when it's more appropriate that they have a consultation review and we can go ahead and make that change at that time. Our second internal audience is product groups or other development groups, or really anybody within Microsoft that could use this type of service. They've gone through an application review and their code is solid. Uh, all of their features are well implemented. And now they need to come to infrastructure to say, how should we configure those, those features? How should we actually set those switches? And that's different from that application review which uh, focuses specifically on whether or not the, the, the program itself is secure, whether it functions as designed. In an infrastructure case, it can function perfectly as designed, yet implemented in a, a very non-secure way. Okay. Our third audience is external, and we work closely with Microsoft Consulting Services. Uh, shout out to my homies. No. <laughs> <laughs> Our third customer is external, and we work closely with Microsoft Consulting Services, where uh, I worked uh, for quite a few years in the North Central District. Uh, hello, Bloomington, Minnesota. <laughs> and, and we're working to increase our footprint so that we can provide this service uh, really across the IT community as a whole. And how long have you been um, providing this service outside of Microsoft? It's a relatively recent offering because of the demand that we're seeing across the IT community. 
It's so often that we think of Microsoft as a silo where we do things one way and the rest of the world does, does things completely differently. And, and that is true to a certain extent, but we're finding that a lot of the expertise that we have within MSIT is applicable at other Fortune 500 companies as well. And that demand really uh, helps us spread a lot of that common knowledge and best practices across the community. So if you could tell me, just to close out this video, um, in one sentence or a short description of what is the value added to um, be at Microsoft or outside of Microsoft from the infrastructure security point of view. Sure. Well, we've got quite a bit of institutional knowledge that we can bring to bear for any implementation situation. Uh, we've dealt with very, very large implementations. We've also dealt with, with very, very specific implementations. And that expertise combined with the best practices that we implement, which adds a tremendous amount of value to customers of all sizes. Great. Thanks, um, Rob. It was a great conversation. I think I myself learned enough on the many challenges that the infrastructure size faces in and out of Microsoft. And I don't think that's something a lot of people take into account by us being a development company. So Yes, and in infrastructure, just to close, we do want to work closely with the development team and, and hands across the water. All right, we're done. <laughs> <laughs>